right there, this is Just Nigeria. Coming up on the program, coronavirus in Kano. Residents attribute rising number of COVID-19 cases to insufficient testing and delays in test results. Also, is hydroponics one of the solutions to resolving Nigeria's looming food security crisis? And in Ghana, scientists are conducting pool tests to speed up measures to curtail the coronavirus. Plus. My name is Bumi Okwakule. Check me out. The woman empowering ladies in the male-dominated profession. Welcome to Just Nigeria, brought to you by the BBC and Channels TV. Where we bring you the stories making the rounds on social media. I am Wali Fakile. Our top story for this week. Now, with over 600 confirmed cases of coronavirus, Kano now has the second highest number of COVID-19 cases in the country. Now, there are rising concerns that the virus has spread far more than what was initially thought in the state, with many attributing this to inadequate testing facilities. So, what strategies have state authorities put in place to curtail the spread of the virus? Uh, Just Nigeria's Ajoke Ulodse tells us more. Since the index case of the coronavirus pandemic was announced in Nigeria on the 28th of February 2020, the virus has now spread to 34 states and the federal capital territory, Abuja. Kano is the most populous state in northern Nigeria. It has recorded more than 600 confirmed cases of COVID-19. It comes next to Lagos, with the second highest number of cases in the country. But that's not the only reason Kano is important. On the 11th of April, 2020, Kano recorded its first COVID-19 case. Although the virus appeared in the center of commerce later than most states, Kano has moved up the ladder rather quickly leaving many worried that a COVID-19 crisis may be imminent. Over the last 30 days, Kano has seen a spike in the number of deaths recorded. Ali Ru and Usman work at the Ahmadiyya Cemetery. They claim they now bury more people than they used to. People are dying every day. We don't know what is killing them. Before, we buried three or four corpses a day. But now, we bury up to 15. Sometimes, we dig the grounds at night and wait for barriers during the day because we are fasting. Before, we spent a week without burying anyone. But now, the situation has changed. During this lockdown, we have buried about 300 to 400 people. The work is too much because of the spike. While state authorities insist that these deaths are not related to the coronavirus, delays in testing and delivery of test results remain a concern. Ahmed Mohamed started showing typical symptoms of COVID-19 on the 16th of April. Four days after, his wife Farida noticed similar symptoms. I just had a, a fever. So I started treating fever from the malaria. Then later on, she said she was suspecting maybe it was a, a typhoid, as like she took typhoid. In the process of treating the typhoid, I now had that notion that it cannot be only typhoid. That we should, because I was coughing, yes. and at night, I cannot uh, breathe properly. I started my own fever. My own was fever. I was not coughing, but I was having serious body pain and uh, my temperature was on the higher side. So I started treating uh, malaria too. I noticed that there's no more changes. He now said to let us announce that this thing is more than uh, just typhoid and uh, malaria. Let us uh, contact NCDC. So we contacted them oh, for good three days. I think three days we were tracing them. If they didn't tell us they are coming, this one will call us and take our details, another one group will call us and take our details, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. They now said, okay, let me contact my friend in uh, Abuja. So he now contacted his friend. So he now contacted his friend, and his friend now contacted the NCDC in Abuja. The NCDC in Abuja now contacted them here through the SA to the governor. 
on uh, COVID-19. So that one now, it was, I think it was that one that I took it off. So they came, that was on Wednesday. As they came, they took our sample. The couple claims they have waited for three weeks and are yet to get the results of their samples. Like Mohammed and Farida, Victor Yekola called health authorities for weeks after his father started showing severe symptoms of COVID. He never got a result, even though his father's samples were collected twice. They came, they took his blood sample, they said we'll get the result. That was on Friday, that we'll get the result on Monday. Even on that Monday, we'll call them, they say no result yet. We'll call again. The man that was responding to us, that was listening to us, said that he's not in charge of the result, that he has to call another unit for the result. He gave us number, we called those people too. They say the result is not out. We keep on quality when he give up. Kano has a huge population, and delays in testing and delivery of test results could mean asymptomatic carriers may continue to spread the virus. Public health specialist Usman Bashir believes this can jeopardize efforts to contain the virus across sub Saharan Africa. In the initial part of the epidemic, we have to take our test to test Abuja. And Abuja has a lot of people coming to test. Lagos is testing about 1,000 per day. Kano is testing 400 now. You know, Kano is a big state. And some LGAs are almost 200 kilometers from the capital. So you need a lot of, if you take samples from Tudumwada or Sukuvinchi or Sanyawa, it's very far from the metropolis. So it is going to be very difficult for one to get, the, just the kids can even spoil along the road. The state's COVID-19 response team maintains it is clearly aware of these limitations. The coordinator, Tijani Hussein, says they are working to surmount the challenges. Our testing capacity in Kano just got established not too long ago. Uh, before last week, um, uh, we only can do 88 samples, uh, while we collect um, over 200 samples, 300 samples in a day. Uh, so um, majority of it we have, we had to shift it, uh, ship it to Abuja for it to get tested. And because Abuja received samples from all over, uh, um, then uh, in, in northern Nigeria, if you look at it, is uh, Abuja is the only testing center. So all states in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, are sent to Abuja for their samples to get tested. So there is that clock within Abuja lab. How do you then manage people whose samples were collected but whose results are not out yet in a way that they are not a risk to other residents? Yes, we, uh, since most of the um, samples we have collected, uh, their numbers, we have their phone numbers, uh, we ensure that we call back and, and, and give them health advisory. Uh, but, but again, we can only give um, health advisory. Uh, it's another thing people are adhering to those advisories. But Farida and Olushego insist they didn't get any advisory from health authorities. Since that time, we call them, they are coming. That's how we just stop, start doing our own uh, local harbor listing. There's one they put, waiting for them. We'll instead of waiting for them, start to do our own treatment ourselves. When they died the second day, they came to show that they, when they even came, they not even came to take me, but they came to fumigate the house. That is to show they already know that he's dead. Hmm? And they did not even tell us in the house that they, they are going to test us. Nothing like that. Although federal authorities imposed a total lockdown, the state government gave residents a few days to shop for groceries. But without adequate testing and proper delivery of results to its residents, thereby earning their trust, the already existing community transmission may leave more deaths in its wake. Ajoke Hulotzi, just Nigeria. All right, what are your thoughts on the spread of coronavirus in Kano State? Do let us know on Twitter, just Nigeria TV. We are looking forward to your comments.